Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I have a very powerful, and amazing chess AI, Rufcade Engine, who played against me in a rapid speed event game, this game is very aggressive because I sacrificed my rook on the board, and I will share the chess tactics and strategies that I employed in the game, so, stay tuned until the end of the video, I started the game with d4, Rufcade considered c5, and I pushed forward the pawn, and he madly considered e5, are you mad, Rufcade? Because you played these two nonsense moves in the opening of the game, where I can play d6, but I would not consider that because queen d6 can attack the pawn with the bishop, therefore, I just played e4, and after the pawn moves, the knight goes here, and after the bishop moves to the e7 square, noticing that Rufcade has a very small center defense, I played a very cunning move in the opening, which is f4, that is a very cunning move, and also you may ask me if this move weakens my dark squares. But it does not, actually, because bishop to c5 is not possible for Rufcade to occupy the dark square, that's the reason why, after the exchanges occurred, we had some peace moves and a lot of development, after the knight goes to f3 and the rook goes here, at this point, playing a short side castle might be considered by many chess players but that's not so good because bishop to g4 can arrive to pin the knight, I love my knight to ride in the celebration of Durga Puja, which is occurring in our festival, after bishop to g4 happened, the bishop goes back, and after the exchanges, we have knight to d7, castling and c4 happened in the game, the pawn is under attack by my pieces, but can I capture the pawn? Because if you dare to do that, then after queen b6 getting a check, he can also pick up the pawn, and a few moves later, when the knight goes to the b5 square, threatening to play knight c7, you need to consider queen a5 to protect the square from being attacked, and also rook to c8 can arrive to pin the knight if you were there to do that. So, going back to the position, we discovered that even though the pawn is under attack by two pieces, I should not capture it, I don't really assume that if your opponent gives you a pawn, you should happily take the pawn and face the consequences of getting trapped in the opening, so, a few moves later, we had a4, bishop going back, at this point, I played a very cunning and strategic move, can you guess what I played in the position? This move is understanding the position, and understanding the chess opening that you need to play in this position, the move that I played is g4, that's a very beautiful move, the point is that even if black considered h6, I can even consider g5, and after the exchange occurred, the queen goes to the b6 square, here I would like to consider rook to b1, and if black dares to consider a5 or any normal kind of moves, he will be done. He has to pack his bag and go home and lose the tournament that he planned for, I will easily capture the knight on the f6 square, forcing you to capture, and after rook takes f6, don't yell like a monkey or joker about the rook sacrifice, I hate that, after the capture, queen to g4 check will arrive, followed by rook to g1, gaining access to this file, where the bishop will be vulnerable, and the position will just be over for you, there is nothing that you can do about this. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing h6 is a very bad choice, that's the reason why we have knight to e5, and after the subsequent exchanges, many players might think of considering rook to g1 to support the pawn from behind, but that's not so good. In this position, I considered rook to f4 because my rook is firstly protecting the pawn and also threatening the knight, if I ever get the chance to capture the knight, I will happily capture it, as I showed you in the previous variation of how rook takes knight occurred, therefore, a few moves later, when rook to g5 arrived to attack the pawn, many players might use their 20 IQ brain and consider h4 in the game, but it is a completely vulnerable move, you know what. The rook is under attack, of course, I agree with that, but after the rook captures the pawn, you might be shocked to see this move, thinking he is sacrificing a piece completely, but that's not the truth, after all the exchanges occur, your c4 knight will be under attack, and black can happily capture it. So, let me share a motivational quote in sudden with you. It does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. Alright, so going back to the position, we discovered that playing h4 is a very bad choice, 
that's the reason why we have rook to f1, emphasizing the attack against the knight, and after a couple of moves later, we have a5 followed by h4 attacking the rook again, the rook goes to the e5 square, as it is the only move he is considering to attack the pawn, do you know what I played in this position? Try to think a little and use your brain, and remember, the brilliant move is very popular. Ok 1 2 3 4, if you guessed rook takes f6, then congratulations, it is a brilliant move that you found, after the capture, the pawn becomes doubled, and the h6 pawn is doubled because knight to f5 can arise to attack the pawn, the position will be horrible for you because my queen and rook are also attacking your position, alright, the knight goes to the c4 square, forcing the rook to move, if the rook goes to the e7 square, the position will be just vulnerable for you, you know how. I can consider rook takes d6, attacking the queen, and the queen can go back to the a5 square, putting more pressure on the rook and the pawn, the position will be over for you again. Alright, so going back to the position, the rook cannot move back, therefore, Rafkade played a very strong move here, he said, if you can sacrifice your rook, stockfish, then why can't I? I am not less than you, let me capture your knight, sacrificing the rook, after the capture occurred, we have the king move, and a few moves later, you can see that we are just maneuvering the pieces, the knight goes to the g3 square, where it can go to h5 to attack the pawn, the pawn is also under attack by the rook, where the king will be vulnerable, we have some pieces dancing on the board, and the king goes here, you can see how the king is just pushing forward like Michael Jackson. Determined to succeed early on the edge, a few moves later, we had some queen and rook moves, and finally, I played g5, and after the subsequent captures, the pawn is under attack by two pieces, the king goes here, and you can see that I want to put my king on the h4 square to attack the rook pawn, after a few more moves, I even captured the pawn with my king, the king is facing the other king and saying, hey king, you will be defeated by me, and in my hand, I have a sword that will defeat you soon. He can arrive on the board, followed by knight to a5, if possible, and after a couple of moves later, you can see that we are just maneuvering the pieces, and bishop to e7 followed in the game. So, a few moves later, we have the queen here, and you can see that we are still doing chess dances at the knight club at 12 o'clock, and the king goes to the h5 square, threatening to consider g6, the pawn is no longer being pinned by the queen, and at this point, capturing the pawn is a very bad idea because after queen takes g6, I will be eager to capture the pawn with the knight, which will lead to a discovered check. So, going back to the position, noticing that the rook is there, we have a6 on the board. After a couple of moves, when the queen goes here and the rook goes to the a1 square, threatening to consider rook to a7 to attack the bishop, there is no way to protect the position, the king and queen just walk through a very different path to enlightenment, the king is there, the white king, is at the peak of the mountain, and the queen and king are straightforwardly aligned in the file, how can black protect his position? There is no way, after rook a7, I capture the rook, and he sacrifices the rook, now, this position is completely winning for me, I defeated Rufkade very badly with my knight queen and rook, I hope you enjoyed the game very much, if so, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best bye bye take care and see you soon.